In this video, I'm going to use StackCrunch to show you how we can make a bar graph. Now, we know with bar graphs that bar graphs can be used to show frequency or relative frequency, especially for qualitative or categorical variables and data. It can also be used for numerical data, but we usually resort or, or save that term of a frequency graph for numerical data as a histogram. But what we want to do is to show a frequency chart or frequency graph for categorical. So what I'm going to do is to, instead of using a pie chart, I'm going to use a bar graph to show how many students passed or failed the proficiency test. So if I go to graph and I click on bar plot, I'm going to use with data. With summary, if I knew how many students passed, I would say pass and then 300, fail 200. I would actually write that in. That's with summary. But with data, StackCrunch is just going to be told the column and they go and calculate it. So I want to select the column of proficiency, or excuse me, for pass fail. I'm not going to worry about the where. Usually we're going to ignore that. I'm going to come back to the grouping by. And I want to look at the frequency. You could look at relative frequency. That will break it down in, to in terms of um, you know, a decimal and percent. That will change that decimal into a percent. But I'm not going to necessarily worry about any of this. I'm going to maybe change the color. I can click on value above the bar. That's going to write the value, the number of, of times someone that, that pass was an observation and fail was an observation. Uh, and I don't need to worry about necessarily, maybe I'll come back to this. I'm just going to click OK to see what the graph looks like. So here we go. I have a bar chart, a bar graph, that shows 163 students passed, or excuse me, failed, and 449 students passed. It already has frequency on the y-axis, but it has this PF on the x-axis. So if I wanted to update that to not say PF, but instead the x-axis I want to say pass or fail. Now if we hit compute it will update that x-axis to pass or fail. You could also call that outcome, you could also say outcome of the proficiency test, but we could also keep it pass or fail. Now if you were putting this on a quiz, I would recommend writing a title on this as well. Now the cool thing about these, these bar graphs and bar charts is that what if I wanted to look at who passed and who failed, but I wanted to see depending on their instructor. So I wanted to see all those who had Phillips and passed and all those who had Goldstein and passed. Well, what we're, what, what's, that is called is, be, is by grouping. So if we go up here, we're going to keep pass fail. But instead of keeping the grouping optional, we're going to say we want to group by the instructor. Now, if I hit compute, it will break down those who failed and had Goldstein, and those who failed and had Phillips, and those who passed with each of the instructors. That's why these particular charts are helpful. They allow us to compare the outcome, they compare the frequency of a particular data value, but split into two groups. So that's why this is pretty good here. You could switch that for anything, really. I mean, if you wanted to not group by instructor, let's say I wanted to group by whether they were a day or evening student, I could do that as well. I can see the day students a lot more, there were actually a lot more day students in general, but we can look at the, the sheer frequency. You can also look at not necessarily the sheer frequency, but you could also look at the relative frequency. Right? So we know relative frequency is going to be a decimal. Okay. Now, just like with any graph, as we've already seen, if you want to save it, you hit options, go to download, you'll hit the, once you rename it, you'll just hit the OK button and it will download to your downloads folder. You can also copy it and it will save it as an image where you can go into Microsoft Word and paste it in.